Hi, welcome to the Web Applications Development Tutorial. Today we are going to create our first and simple ISP.NET MVC application. So let's start. First of all, let's add the project in the Visual Studio. Make sure I have selected the Visual C Sharp as a template, web, then select ISP.NET Web Application. Let's name it Tutorial 1. Select empty template, but put the tick box for the MVC. Make sure you have unticked this tick box host in the, in the cloud for Microsoft Azure. And click OK. You can see that in the solution explorers, the Visual Studio automatically created all the necessary files for us. However, the project is empty. We need to create the first controller and the view in order to launch the application. In order to add the controller, right click on the controllers folder in the solution explorer, add controller. For now select empty MVC5 controller. Name it home controller. Make sure for the future that all your controllers have the postfix controller. So the Visual Studio have created the controller for us. It extends the base controller class. Everything should be okay. However, in order to run the application we need to create a view. Also you can see that our function view which is responsible for the rendering of the view is highlighted. That means that you don't have a view if you have installed the resharper. To add the view, right click on the view on this function, add. For now, let it be empty. So currently, I want to highlight that we didn't use any layout page and any styling. If we don't have any layout page in styling, and for now, click add. The Visual Studio automatically create, applies the bootstrap style for us. So it creates styles, some scripts, it creates the view for the index action result and it created the layout master page. Now let's press F5 and see the result. So currently we have created our first simple, the application that shows the static content. So now let's extend it and try to pass the content from the controller to the view. We will use three main methods. We will use the view data, view bag, and temp data objects. They are all built in in the ISP.NET MVC framework. Of so let's start with the view bag. Let's pass the mock information on the product using the view bag object. In order to access the object view bag, we need to implicitly type the view bag. Then to create the property for this object, we need to add dot the name of our property. So you, you can see that our view bag has the dynamic properties. We can allocate the name of the property as we like. And the name of our product will be the smartphone. So currently we have assigned the property product of the view bag object to the smartphone. So now let's switch back to view and show it in the header. To show it, we need to use the following notation. We need to put add view bag so the property name should be exactly the same as we have stated in the controller now again we'll press F5 and we have the header 2 holds information about our product as we have stated in the controller it is a smartphone now let's use the other building object the view data so usage of the view data is different than the usage of the view back object. So the view data is a key value dictionary. In order to store some variable, we need to allocate in this dictionary the specific key and then to allocate the value. So for us, the key will be product and the value smartphone. Again, we have assigned the key product to the view data object and the value for this key will be the smartphone. In order to access this key, we need to just specify this line. We will type the name of the object view data, then in the brackets we specify the name of the key. Now let's press F5 and we see the result. Finally, let us try the usage of the temp data. It is the similar to the view data dictionary. 
However, I should mention that the functionality of the view back temp data and view data are different from each other. I suggest you to make the additional research on that. So now let's try to pass the object to the view and make our view strongly typed. So for that purpose, let's create the model. So assuming that, that the purpose of the application will be the electronic catalog, we'll create the representation of the product data entity. I highly suggest you to follow the right notation in naming of your objects. So for me, every class presents the view model of the data entity will have the postfix view model. And for now, let's assume that our product entity will have only two properties. It will be the product name and product price. Now let's pass an object, which will be the instance of the product view model class to the view. Name of the product will be, for example, iPhone. Price will be 699.99. And all we need now is to pass the model to the view. However, we need to specify that the object which we are passing to the view should be a type of a product view model. In order to do that, we need to add the following line. We need to specify that the model will be, so it is the full namespace of the model. Now in the header of the page, we will show the name of the product and the price. So as you can see, we have succeeded in that. So now let's look through the validation of our view models. So as you may remember, we can specify the three types of the validation. First one is a client side validation. It is using JavaScript, jQuery or other libraries on the client side. The next type of the validation is a server side validation. It is whatever you can put in the controller. And the one of the most useful one is the validation using the data annotations attribute in the view model. So now we will check the last one. Assuming that we will have the following use case we should be able to add the new product to the database so for that purpose we need to create two action results one for the get request one for the post request so so i have created two separate methods action results for handling the business case when we need to add the product to the database so one action result will serve when we will send the get request to the home controller to the action result at product. It will render us the page with the form controls to add the new product. Then when we will submit the form and submit the data from the web page, it will send the post request and also set the product view model as an argument to the action result at product. So now we need to add the view. So let's make our task a bit easier and select the template edit and specify the model product view model so it automatically generated us the necessary form controls and the validation results so now as long as we don't have the database we will not implement the logic of saving the data directly to the database but we will show the message to the user that the product will be added successfully if there are no errors in the model so if model state, it is a built-in object into the MVC framework, the isValid property specifies that we don't have uh, any errors. If there are errors in the model state, the isValid property will be false. And let's pass the message that the product is added successfully using the view back. And of course, we need also to add it to the view. So currently we have done the changes in the controller. We have created a separate view, but it will not work as long as we don't have any validation implemented inside of our view model class. So first of all, let's make 
our name required. So that means that the name field in the form should be compulsory. Then we will restrict the length of this field to 20 characters. Finally, to avoid the cases that the price is negative or equal to zero, we'll specify that our price should be in a range from 1 to 999,999. So now let's press F5 and test our results. If I'll press save, I will see that there are following error secure. Now let's enter the velvet data. And as you can see, our protocol set is successful. So the last point of the current tutorial, let's a bit extend the usage of the HTML helpers and get accustomed to that. First of all, let's extend our product view model by adding several fields. So first of all, we'll add the description of the product. Then we'll add the logical field. So assuming that through the sum period of time, the product become an active. For example, the product ran out from the stock and we need to also handle this business case by adding the flag active. For the last one, we'll create the field that should depend on the selectable value. So the example of this field will be the category. For us, it will be the category ID. Now let us add the corresponding controls to our view. For the logical value, we'll use the checkbox for For the product description, we'll use text area. And for the category ID for now, we'll use the drop down list. However, in order to use the drop-down list 4, we need to specify the values for the select list box. The value should be passed as the list of the select list item object. So let's specify it. And let's assume that we'll have two categories, smartphones and tablets. And let's press F5 and see the result. So as you can see, we have all the related controls appear. We have the select list box for our category and we have the checkbox for the active state and the text area for the description. One more point should be noticed that we see that we don't have the localized and the right labels for our control. We can change them programmatically from the view model by adding the attribute data name to the property of our class. And now we have the right labels. So in this situation, when we will have integer and we have used drop down list four, we are assuming that our categories are loosely typed. In other words, the categories are stored somewhere in the database. And then we need to get all the categories from the database and pass them to the view. However, there is another approach. We can hard code the values for the categories and hold them in the enumerable. Then let's change the data type of the category ID property. And the last thing is, instead of using the drop down list for and passing the list of the select list item, we'll use enum drop down list for. 
and we have exactly the same result as the previous one. But in this case, all our categories are hard-coded. So that is the end of the current tutorial. Thank you for the attention.